tropical gardens tend to change quite significantly as the months progress in the year, and by October they are generally producing that jungly foliage feeling. So here I'm going to replay my video from the 14th of May while trying to replicate each shot to show you how the garden looks now. The link to the original video is in the description if you want to watch it in full. But I've tried to replicate these shots as best I can, however in some cases it wasn't possible for me to stand in exactly the same location or film at the exact same angle because of the changes that have happened in the garden. For example, some plants had got so tall that I just couldn't film the plants that were behind them. However, you should still be able to get an idea of just how much it has changed in four and a half months. Most of my bananas have recovered really well from being stripped down earlier in the year. However, two of my bananas have gone into flower since, so I do wonder if maybe that's got something to do with it, as they were only three years old. And it may be that being put under that much stress has forced them to trying to complete their life cycle. In the background here you can see just how barren the soil was four and a half months ago. But now in the garden you just can't see any bare patches of soil anywhere. Of course when winter hits again this year a lot of my plants will die back to ground level. And next spring I'll pretty much be starting this process all over again. However I am now trying to include more evergreen varieties that will keep interest in the garden through winter. And of course as other plants get bigger such as some of my aces and palm trees. That will definitely help improve how my garden looks earlier in spring. Apologies that the video in the corner is blocking some of the plant labels that I put on the original video, but if you particularly want to know what they say then please check out that link in the description. Of course some of these changes that have occurred are because I've planted new plants in that spot since, such as this Ensete that is now next to the Strelitzia, while other plants like this Eucomis sparkling burgundy with its beautiful deep red leaves, is now completely covered by all the other green foliage that surround it. The original video here was showing how my Mosasica mensis had died back to ground level over winter. Now you can see it's come back with a couple of pups, while my slower growing Musella banana is now taller than it's ever been, and even has a couple of pups growing of its own. My second Musella banana over here is also doing really well now. While well, this section of grass is where I've now started building my new bed. At the beginning of the year I was just letting some of my flowering weeds grow because I wanted to attract more bees and butterflies into the garden. Now as you can see there is so much growing there in that space. The ruin behind me here is one exception because that's actually died back due to lack of watering. And although the gunnera has got bigger since this was filmed... I have cut back a few of the leaves to allow some light through to other plants. However, this arum lily is absolutely huge now. While this one does normally produce a few flowers at this time of year, but it's not flowering yet. Four and a half months ago, my azalea was looking absolutely beautiful, but now you can't even see it. And the cannas are the main source of colour in this area now. The anemones have died back to ground level. But there's plenty of foliage plants there taking its place, as well as some deep purple from my salvia amistad. Whereas the foliage that's grown up against this huge pot of bamboo now almost completely masks it. My spotty dotty is still present under the foliage of the bamboo and the gingers and the red hot pokers. Of course they've finished flowering now, and the fruit that follows has now gone. My Washingtonia palm trees were definitely hit hard by the harsh winter, but they're looking lush and green now. Of course, a couple of the smaller ones didn't make it, but the ones that have are looking healthy and happy now, although they haven't put on anything like as much growth this year as they did last year. So, of course, I am hoping that we're going to have a much milder winter this year, and hopefully we'll see much better results from the plants next year. The growth point at the top of my tetrapanics died back slightly over winter, so the growth started from a lot lower down this year. But last year the leaves were a bit stunted in growth, and now this year they've come back and they're large and much better. The bananas of course make a massive difference at this time of year, once they've got all their leaves out and they've got that wonderful umbrella shape. While in this area it's the ginger, the hedicheum densiflorum which provides this wonderful green foliage. 
But this is one of those areas of the garden that's really difficult to show you exactly what I was showing you four and a half months ago because the main interest now is actually up much higher. And where you could see pretty much all of the fence before now is just a lush backdrop of foliage. Collocasias and tree ferns are poking out in the middle of my gunnera. While the gunnera flower that I filmed at the beginning of the year is still there, but it's covered in these bright orange seeds. Although I won't be collecting these, as tinctura is not legal to distribute. If you're enjoying this content, then please do make sure you're subscribed to my channel. This is still a new channel, so every subscriber really does make a difference. You can also turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss any of my new videos. And please let me know what you think in the comments because they really do help my channel to grow. You can also follow me on social media for links to my latest videos and my photo of the day, in which I usually share photos of flowers from my garden, along with their names if known. You can follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, threads, or you can join my Facebook group to ask questions or share photos. And you can find all of my YouTube videos on the Freya's Tropical Garden website, which I will also be expanding to provide advice pages as well as items for sale. Links to these pages are included in my description.